Hello and welcome to the section of the Differential Equations Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to continue learning how to solve these non-homogeneous ordinary differential equations. Uh, but in this case we're going to use a method, a very powerful method, called variation of parameters. Now first, before I get started with describing what the method is and how to apply it and all of that, I want to make sure you understand that in the Differential Equations Tutor Volume 1, we had the variation of parameters method introduced there and it was all in the context of first order equations. So in other words, uh, differential equations with a first derivative. Much, much simpler equations. But that variation of parameters method is sort of like the baby and this one here is the parent. So it's really the same method, it's just uh, you know that one was applied to a simpler equations. So if you haven't already done so, I would highly recommend you grabbing that volume one of my differential equations tutor and watching that section on variation of parameters because when you go through a, a few first order uh, examples you'll understand the basic idea of what it's doing and then when you jump into this when we get into second order and third order and higher uh, differential equations then uh, you know the math looks a lot messier but really you're, or you're doing the same thing alright so in general this method the variation of parameters method lets you tackle non-homogeneous equations which means the right hand side of the equal sign is non-zero just like in the last section but the main difference is, there's a couple main differences. The first one is, if you remember, in the last section, the undetermined coefficient section, the E of T on the right-hand side, we had to be able to find an annihilator. That basically locks down the right-hand side of the equal sign to a form that we're comfortable with, that we've seen before. Right? So it's kind of like special form. For this guy, it's a very general method. So the right-hand side of the equal sign can be anything you want. That's, that's number one thing that's huge. It basically opens up a whole new class of, of equations. Um, the second thing is, up until now, we've always talked about constant coefficient equations, right? Well, on the left-hand side were the derivatives and everything. Everything in front of all the derivatives were always constants. Uh, in this method, they don't have to be constants. Uh, they can be more general. So those two things by themselves basically make this thing hugely more general and hugely more applicable. The coefficients don't have to be constant and what's on the right hand side of the equal sign does not have to be of a special form. It can be anything you want. However, the, the, the uh, mirror image of that or the other side or the flip side of that is that this method can rapidly get out of control and become very difficult to actually use. So we're going to use them for some problems here, illustrate how they're done, but even though it seems like this holy grail of of, oh my gosh, if I just know this one, I can do anything I want. Reality is, if you try to apply this to a random equation with just crazy coefficients and crazy you know, thing on the right-hand side, the uh, integration and everything that you need to do is going to become so cumbersome that it's very difficult to apply by hand. Uh, okay? Uh, the main thing that you need to be able to do <clears throat> is, even though the left-hand side does not have to have constant coefficients, you still need to be able to find the related homogeneous equation solution. In other words, like in all the other methods we've been using, the first thing we do is we take the right-hand side of the equal sign, we throw it away, make it zero, we call that H of T, or, or H, the homogeneous version, related homogeneous equation, we solve it. And then we say in the end that the final solution is going to be H of T, the homogeneous solution, plus some particular solution. We're going to do the same thing here. So we need to be able to still find the solution of the related homogeneous equation and we need to find a particular solution and we're going to add them together. It's just that the method's a little bit different. So I guess what I'm trying to say coming full circle is that even though we say from the outset that the coefficients of the equation don't have to be uh, constant, but you do have to be able to find